Are the Costco Kirkland Signature Wedges any good? Let's find out, and let's do it now. Hi everyone, my name is James Robinson and welcome to this YouTube channel. Yes guys, that is right. Today we are testing the Costco Kirkland Signature Wedge Set. Now, these wedges cost about the same as one premium wedge if not cheaper. So today we're going to test if they're any good, we're going to test if they're good value, and we're going to test if you should put them in your golf bag next time you go and buy lots and lots of toilet roll and ketchup and toothpaste and things like that. Also guys, you will see that today I have the Kirkland Signature KS1 putter. So stay tuned if you want to see that, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it. But today we are focusing on the wedges. So, guys, just a real quick one before we do get into the bones of this video. I am giving away this very set of Kirkland Signature Wedges. And not only that, if you are local, feel free to come and have a game with me when you pick them up. All you have to do, guys, you have to be a subscriber to the channel, throw a like on this video and comment below, subscribed. Guys, we are on a big push to 200,000 subscribers and I would love you to be a part of it. So, guys, if you want to be with the chance of winning these very wedges and coming and having a game with me when you pick them up, subscribe like comment subscribe and i will very much look forward to meeting hopefully one of you who wins these wedges now i'm not gonna lie guys i've already had these out and i've already played golf with them because not very long ago i did a video playing golf with everything costco makes um so in today's video i'm going to kind of typecast the demographic of people that buy these wedges i'm going to use the kirkland ball and i'm also going to use the kirkland glove because um I mean, we all love a bargain, right? And if you look at the receipt for these clubs here, um, I mean, value for money-wise, they are pretty good, aren't they? But value is only good if the product is as good as the value. So we need to test them. So we will kick this video off with one of my favourite clubs, the 60 Degree. Now, you all know if you watch this channel that I love a good lob wedge. I use it far too often. And for me, it's a club that I always generally rely on. We're going to talk positives about these clubs, negatives about these clubs, and what Costco could potentially change about these clubs to make them that little bit better. You see, for me, I have already played with these clubs and I've got a few opinions already. I absolutely love the amount of bounce and camber on these wedges. They seem so easy to use. And I think that's a market that Costco are definitely targeting because as you would imagine, it's not exactly going to be tour pros that are shopping for their clubs at Costco, is it? It's your everyday golfer. So I've already played a few shots with these clubs and love them. I'll throw a couple of them on screen now. And one of the big things I like about these is the shape of the head. That could go in for the first one. That stopped amazingly fast as well. Big, big fan of this lob wedge. The one thing I would say is it would be nice to have... Oh, that's another good one. Look at those two for two first shots of a wedge review. I mean, Chris likes to talk tour averages and that's, um, that's quite frightening with the combination of Kirkland wedge and ball. It's not all sunshine and roses though. I think it would be nice to have a little bit more of a variance. It would be nice to have a choice on, look at that, look how easy that goes in the air. It would be nice to have a choice on loft. It would be nice to have a choice on maybe bounce and grind and things like that. But then you've got to remember that you're spending £119.99 on not just one wedge, but three. So I guess you can kind of forgive it. Now, if we talk about tech, Costco actually nail it on the box for you and make it nice and easy. So they do conform with the rules of golf. They have milled face technology for high spin, which um, I can sort of say, yeah, I enjoyed those. We have progressive center of gravity for optimal trajectory, a versatile shot making sole design, which I've already touched on, Kirkland signature tour grip. I'm not gonna lie, they are pretty rubbish. And Kirkland signature wedge flex shafts designed by True Temper. They seem pretty good actually, I'm a fan of those. Let's see if we can get even closer than those. These just seem so easy to get up in the air, that is frightening. And that one stopped on a dime as well. A lot of people say that sometimes durability is an issue just like the ball i will take a look at these balls after the bunker shots as well but just look how easy that comes out i duffed that one it's the closest one that is all down to the sole technology to be fair i mean i would like to maybe try a 58 degree but for me this 60 is just so easy to get out there i mean looking at six bunker shots there this isn't the hardest bunker in the world to get out of, but it's still a bunker. And there are six shots. So 
for 120 quid, um, I'm going to give the lob wedge a nice big tick for bunker play. Let's play some different shots with the sand wedge now, the 56. Now, I did play some shots with this when I did the other video, and as you can see, I was quite pleased with that as well. As for durability, um, this is the lob wedge after I've just given it a clean. You can see a few marks on the toe, that's obviously down to my poor, poor ball striking. But that's not bad, is it? So for this sand wedge, I'm going to leave the camera next to the flag so you can see a little bit more of how the balls react. I'm going to go about 30, 40 yards back, which is where I would play a nice high lofted shot. Sorry, Chris. And we'll see how many we can get inside that kind of six foot circle where you would like to think you're going to hole most of your putts. Ah, it's in there somewhere. Got it. Not bad. Now, as you can see there, out of six shots, five of them I'm pretty happy with. One of them wasn't a great shot, but plenty of spin on there. If I didn't strike them all amazingly well, one thing I would say is this leading edge is quite sharp, so it does tend to dig a little bit, but then the camber on the bottom does help you with it, so it sort of lets you off a bit. Now, for me, whenever I'm testing wedges, it's all about how versatile are they? Not everybody wants to use lob wedge around the greens all the time, so how versatile is this sand wedge? well well this is an area where you need to be confident with chipping it's a little bit wet it's a little bit boggy and that bounce should help as a touch and you can see there that is glorious you can see what i mean about it digging a little bit you don't mind that too much here in the rough and it is so easy to deliver that loft exactly where you want it open this face up a bit I mean that, that for like 40 pound a wedge is quite absurd really. Oh, that wasn't the best one. Very good. And you see guys, for me there, this isn't really about the technology that's in the wedge, it's about the aesthetics of how it's been designed because as you'll see here, if I want to open that face up, the leading edge doesn't come up, it doesn't sit at the equator of the ball, it still glides underneath nicely. And that's all down, to, oh, that's dripped on my glove. Uh, at least the glove was only five pound as well. But that's all down to the design of these wedges. Right, I'm gonna play a couple out of this horrible thick stuff because that's generally where we end up. And then I think we'll have a look at that bad boy because I played some beauties with that. So this is generally where you don't want to be and this is where, oh, I can't get them out of my pocket. You don't want to be and this is where this sole can help you out a little bit. Now you're not expecting to get this within five feet, 10 feet. You're just expecting or hoping for it to help you out. Go! and get it there or thereabouts, which is exactly what that did. You'll see that I'm not even putting these in a, a lie that we can predict. I mean, that's going to be incredibly good. That could go in. Oh, but this is helping me. So I've said I'm going to talk positives and negatives. I'm almost struggling to find negatives at the moment, apart from not really having many options. Where's that going to go? Oh, that's not too bad, actually, but we'll play it anyway for a bit of confidence. It's almost like you just throw that bounce behind the ball and it works, which, um, which is what you're supposed to do. So, well done, Costco. Well done. Let's take a look at the gap wedge. Okay, so 52 degree gap wedge. We've got about 60 yards here, maybe a little bit more, maybe, no, 60 yards. The flag's at the back, so we don't really want this to spin too much. Kind of one stop and drop. It's quite a difficult flag up on that top level. I do feel like you almost have to shallow out your movement a bit to allow that bounce to glide under the ball. These are all nice though, I'm really enjoying that distance control and if we get even closer to the green, I'm going to put these divots back. Oh, be good. Sit! 
I'll run out a little bit. I don't think we get the spin that you might get on a premium wedge such as a Voki or even a Mac Daddy. You can't really argue with that, can you? So you can see here, we've sort of got it surrounded from 50, 60 yards. A couple of bad ones, that was a bit of a duff, but we still hit the green. And I'm taking that all day. Again, relative to the price of these clubs, I think they're almost a beginner golfer's best friend. They're that easy to hit. I mean, I've duffed a couple and we've still got on the green. I'm gonna play some shorter shots now. Again, a shot where I would want to play a gap wedge. I wouldn't necessarily play a sandwich or a lob wedge. May even choose a pitching wedge or a nine iron for a bump and run, but let's see how good this gap wedge is for a bump and run. And then we'll have a bit of a roundup. This is where you just want a nice easy shot, a nice simple shot that runs up as you want it to. And that's not bad, is it? It's not a bad start. I'm a big fan of the shape of these, not just because they've got that go on, surely. Oh, how has that stayed there? Not just because we've got that nice forgiving sole, but they've actually made them look nice and small as well. Go on, you run up there as well. We're not doing bad here. We're not doing bad at all. That was a little bit short because you see sometimes you see these wedges that are designed to be forgiving they're designed for your everyday golfer but they look massive look clumsy look horrible and these actually as you look down at them i'm going to say they look as good as some premium wedges but they've got that element of forgiveness that's not bad again last one let's see if we can hold one last shot of the day sit not bad oh i can't believe that that one didn't go in guys how would i conclude a review of the costco kirkland signature wedges for me i think they're excellent value for money but not only that i think they're actually good golf clubs i think they're good wedges i think personally i would have to put some different grips on them because they feel a little bit cheap i can imagine they wouldn't last that long anyway but for the price you're probably not overly bothered and um i still can't believe that didn't go in apart from that guys i will see you all tomorrow subscribe if you haven't already and give us a like Bye.